Hello everyone, I'm John McFarlane, Head of Creator Engagement, and I am back for episode <laughs> six of the Sea of Thieves uh, official uh, podcast. And I'm back joined by most of my usual Motley crew and a, and a special guest today. So we've got uh, to my left, Christina McGrath, who is Head of Community. We've got Mike Chapman, Creative Director, Joanie, Executive Producer, and joined in our guest spot today, we've got Chris Davies, who's Senior Designer. I got that right, right? Senior Designer? You did get that right. Hell yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's my one job. I get to do it. Because first off, I wanted to say thank you to Christina for last episode um, coming in right. and just doing it amazingly. It just shows that I am absolutely superfluous. not required. Yeah. It's superfluous to this entire thing. <laughs> but like a weed, I am sticking around and I'll always come back. Like, so you can't get rid of me. Good. Yeah. I didn't enjoy it. I'm glad you're here. It's right. good. Yeah. No, you did no, such an amazing right. job. You did. It's, it's nice very kind. Know, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's you know, kind. you did a lovely job. Yeah. <laughs> was it us? It was, was it us that was the main problem? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was Drew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say that because say that he's not here. <laughs> I would not say that. But you're going to be great. Find us. <laughs> no, no one sees this. Right? Yeah. yeah. And I in no way avoided the toughest podcast. By, by going away and leaving you all to it. It was, uh, but it's good to be back for some nice, nice light-hearted content mm. uh, that we're going to talk about today. But the uh, before we get started, the usual stuff that I have to run through is obviously if you are listening to us, you can view us on the Sea of Thieves YouTube channel. So head over there if you want to view all these lovely faces um, today. And if you are watching us, but maybe say you're halfway through it and you're like, oh, I can't watch something in the car, but you can listen on any reputable podcast app. Uh, you can go on there and just download and, and listen to the rest of the stuff on there. Uh, lastly, uh, Christina will be... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Christina will be leaving us right now. No, Christina is, um, has be, will be looking on social networks for any people who are asking questions. So if you do want your question answered on the next podcast, then please use the hashtag SOT podcast. Um, but let's get on with it. I've got my laptop here today and my, the text is really big, so I'm having to scroll lots. so I apologize. Um, but first off, we're going to talk about how people are, because we always do that. You're really on it today. Is, yeah. The rest, I know. I'm you didn't know. say our own names. Yeah. Yeah. You introduced <laughs> four or something, like some sort of premium deluxe service. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you, the rest is yeah. The really rest good. has done me well. I'm firing through this. The um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get through. And this is my first day actually sitting with you on a podcast for like two years. So maybe that's what's wow. that's what's brought it on. The, the in-person interaction. But yeah, let's go go around the table. How have you been? Fine. I wasn't really prepared for this. Um, yeah. What's the word Fine. people ask you in a usual day? How Sorry. have you been? What was the like, last time? What was, that, what was the situation last time? Did I have a leak in my house last time? Uh, that was two, was that podcasts, two podcasts ago. That's solved now. So oh. that is all completely solved. Brilliant. Really Got a new cool. roof. Very expensive. Very painful. But, um, but now my house is finished. The work finished. Yes. But now I have to fix the little kind of damp patches on the wall and stuff, which I tried doing myself by kind of like, I can't even remember what the thing is that you do. Um, but I've been like sanding it and then I tried yeah. painting it and then some of it peeled off again. So I'm like, no. So I just <laughs> contacted just a painter and decor wrecker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I like, it was way out of my league, basically. But you've been proper into DIY. Uh-huh. You've been, yeah. What have you been doing? <laughs> I, I built some bin covers for like <laughs> that you put the bins oh, yeah. in. Yeah, nice wooden things so to make it look oh, nicer like on dock. the outside of the house. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, for the outside nice of the house. Description. Yeah, yeah. Bin dock. So yeah. Yeah, that's been my life. Very exciting. I don't, I don't know how to top bin covers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honest with you, I'm really going to struggle here. Um, I don't. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm well. We're just very busy in a good way. We're growing the design team working on so much stuff, which I'm sure Chris will talk about as well. Um, but I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. I haven't been doing DIY at the weekend. Just been playing Elden Ring, relaxing, having a great time with that. Has it been tough? It is tough, but as you hear lots of people talk about, the fact that it is open world now, their version of an open world means you can kind of take it at your own pace. And I love the fact that you know, it's all on there for you to discover. It's up to you to make your own way in the world. So having a good time playing that, relaxing at the weekends. 
Nice. That's it. Bin yeah. <laughs> no bin covers. No, yeah. no bin covers. My end no either. No, no, disappointing, I know. No, I've, I've introduced everyone here to two course toast this morning, <laughs> which is very important. One savory, one sweet, same morning. Just brilliant. It will change the way you live your life. Why have one when you can have both? <laughs> exactly. That's what I say. <laughs> so, it's not. <laughs> That's my motto. Yeah, that's not my motto. <laughs> no, it's good. I'm very happy to be here. Chris? I already have bin covers, actually. Yeah, it's it's yeah, very yeah. good when the weather's windy and I can see everyone else in the neighbourhood, their bins are toppled over and I can smugly look at my <laughs> bins. They're still, still upright. Nice. But, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I haven't been playing Elden Ring because it's a bit too hardcore for me, but yeah, I've been playing Gran Turismo and those licensed tests are also very hardcore. Mm. Those gold gold trophies and the license tests, I'd actually say it's probably harder than Elden Ring. Oh, that's <laughs> don't, <a> scoop. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't at that's me, everyone. That's, but that's my stance. Are you on pad or wheel? Uh, pad. Nice. Very good haptics. Oh, very good. Yeah, very good. Mm, Isn't it funny, like, the hardest question you could ever ask on this podcast is, how are you? Yeah, how are you? It's yeah. like, Hot Topics Part 2. How, how are you? That's, we should have a whole episode. I, I don't know. I don't know. I what did I do? Who am I? Yeah. What, I, I don't know anymore. I think I'm okay. <laughs> Can we cut to an intermission? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't prep me for this. Uh, okay. Uh, let's just head into it. So our main kind of topic that we're going to hit today that you, you do all know about is adventures. It's bins. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, adventures. Um... So, first off, like, Michael, just run to you, like, recap. Yeah. Top level, for folks who, I'm sure most of the people who are tuning in know what they are, but for top level, what are adventures and mysteries? Yeah. Um, I'll get to that. I want to give it a bit of a... <laughs> a bit, to talk about a bit, a bit, a bit. <laughs> I'll get to that, yes. Yeah, so double course toast. No, um, just a bit of the background to it, really. So, uh, as everyone listen, listening will hopefully appreciate, you know, the the world building of Sea of Thieves has um, always been something that we've been passionate about. Hasn't always been, I guess, wasn't initially in the game to the extent it is today. So, the, the, you know, the last several years, we've been expanding our world building through Tall Tales, expanding the backstories of our characters, our trading companies. The sense that the world is full of these secrets, um, these vibrant storylines, and the sense that players are watching the world grow and evolve as they play. So expanding more of our world building outside of just the content that we add. So I think looking at what we've been adding in seasons, we add a lot of mechanics, we add systems, but a lot of the backstory to all of that is told through NPC dialogue. It's not front and centre for our players. So that's just the, the sense of our world is, I guess, more static than we'd ideally like. Um, so that's part of the backdrop to this. There's also what we were doing alongside our seasons we were running live events throughout the year and i think us reflecting on them where we a kind of assessment of them while they're good they're something to do every time you come back and play the game but they are really just about the mechanics they're really about the mechanics and the material rewards it's here's a list of things to do but we're going to reward you with a cool cosmetic to say you were there and you took part of it so looking back on what we've added to the game and the way our world is today, what we wanted to do was rather than appeal to players' heads in terms of come in, play the game, here's a cool reward. We really want to get their, to be fair, their, their hearts invested in the ongoing world of Sea of Thieves. So we've taken what we've done with their live events and we've evolved them by injecting narrative into them. So adventures at their core are the next step for our live events and they are narrative in focus, they're much more cinematic, but really what they're about is putting players at the heart of their storytelling. So rather than our world staying largely static, we want the Sea of Thieves main storyline to be something that unfolds episodically each month, and adventures are the key to that. So adventures foreshadow upcoming content, they build on each other, they tell continuing storylines that players feel like they're part of and they're, they're part of it unfolding, they're not just static in the way a tall tale is and a really cool aspect of them is they're they're effectively amplified by world changes so making more dramatic changes in our world which players have already seen with shrouded islands that's something we've always wanted to do we've dabbled in it but now it's part of officially how we update the game 
So adventures are these episodic, narrative-focused live events coupled with world changes that put players at the heart of the storytelling. And we're really kind of taking that to heart with their, with certain adventures where players will get to choose a side. So what we're already doing with Shrouded Island is seeding the idea of a major change to our world with flame heart and mysterious deeds behind the scenes, all, all, all as part of it. But players will get to play their part in defending the Sea of Thieves or not. That was a really long way to answer that question. But yeah, the the, the top level is they are now... the podcast now. They are. There we go. We don't, <laughs> no, I, think, I think it is important for for to know where this has come from. This, is, this has come from a place of how do we give the world that we've created its dues, how we put the world on a pedestal, showcase it, and not just tell a story that you play through, you know, you... you you know, you, you play through for a couple of hours, then you forget about it. It's something that's constantly unfolding every month um, through this episodic narrative. So we think um, to kind of to kind of wrap that up. I think the main thing to take away is that what does live service mean for Sea of Thieves? What what what's with everything we've tried? You know, builds our adventures. We did monthly voyages. We we've got seasons now, which are working out incredibly well for us. But what's that final form of the Sea of Thieves live service? And we think that next step is adventures because adventures make the most of the unique world that we've created. There you go. The what? final oh, form. The final, the final form. There's never a final form. Was, was, you really committed to it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's the final form until we until learn we something else. And learn and, yeah. And do even but, more, yeah. Yeah, it's come from that place of, yeah, just celebrating our world and putting players at the heart of it. Yeah, and I've loved it as well, like having gone and played... Um, the, the kind of the first adventure, just being able to experience that live and kind of having been behind the scenes with the trailers, with everything else, but then go and play it in the world. It was just great. It was so atmospheric just to see that world change and also to know that it's a time limited thing and this stuff's going to evolve. Actually, that was it was really kind of powerful and cool and to see other players experiencing it at the same time. To meet Belle as well, who's a, who is the new community favourite. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. she's amazing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like, We've got a lot of fan art for Belle. Yeah, I know. It's incredible. And rightly so. It? Yeah, she's amazing. really cool. I think that for me, that's one of the benefits of weaving the narrative into our live events, monthly updates as well, in terms of giving players those stories to tell months down the line. Like when I think back to last year and we had Flags of Friendship, great event, everyone seemed to enjoy it, Reapers versus the World. But you don't kind of leave them with any particular stories. You don't necessarily have the, that specific story to say, do you remember when this? Do you remember when we first met Belle? Do you remember when Golden Sands was left abandoned? Do you remember when we had to go to a misty shipwreck bay and take on a soul flame captain? We're kind of creating these great little stories that people get to speak about a year down the line. And that's, I think it's the narrative context that helps you to do that. It's that framing that as a player, I care about these characters. I care about the world. So I'm going to remember my interactions with these characters, with these worlds. I'm going to remember the reasons why I'm doing this stuff and that leads to those stories as well where you can look back. In a year's time, I'm really ex excited to kind of see what stories the players are going to be talking about this first year of adventures. I think this could be really exciting, but also exciting to see how through the dynamic nature as well, it's changed the landscape of the world as well. Really excited. And I think that's the thing. Like, you, like a lot of people will sometimes like look at it where you are right now but it's not until you're in the lens of looking back from where you are in the future that you sometimes appreciate the things that happened the first time they happened like so yeah, it's really interesting to see like you say like a lot of people will refer to some of our earlier like uh updates yeah. like when we first yeah. launched the game and at the time people would be like they like kind of brush that off as yeah i did that and yeah it was fine and now that's like they hold it up in this kind yeah. of like nostalgia it's a major moment in history moment, yeah, for yeah. Thieves, yeah and and it'd be really interesting to see how when everything has changed and all the stuff that's going to happen happens that you look back on those events like oh yeah yeah, yeah. I remember that point but like, um that critical point so yeah it's a really really good point um so like this kind of folds into this like about you've already touched on some of the thinking behind why we changed to the format but like when we talk about like cadence and, and things like that like <laughs> great word. word of the day it's a great word <laughs> word of the day it's in Wordle. uh the uh, uh the like what is our thinking around that like joe probably like yeah. what is our thinking around like why we changed this adventures format um well we definitely want 
or I guess we acknowledge that seasons, like people would come back at the start of seasons, they'd be all like excited, they'd start their progression through it, they'd be playing with whatever new features have, have kind of arrived. But then it kind of tailed off kind of as we go through to the you know the middle of the season and the latter parts people's kind of buzz and excitement and things to talk about things to have kind of conversations around and and reasons to kind of return to sea of thieves and things just kind of wasn't really there right and so um having this regularity of adventures yeah. that kind of folds in alongside it will give you those what kind of cool reasons to return give you that moments of conversation and you can kind of see it with even just the things we're doing now of like the loading screen image that we um, released recently ahead of season um, uh, six coming. But with the little teasers in there, there's so much more opportunity for conversation and for us to drive kind of speculation and excitement and things with these adventures leading up towards them, after them, and just how this whole narrative is going to be unfolding. There's just yeah, there's just so much more to get excited by and engaged by and to talk about. Yeah, like, like, yeah. like I think there is, I mean, yeah, great, great point with that. The the kind of front end the way we mm -hmm. theme our front end and the main menu yeah there's so, so many little clues in there but it all goes back to i guess the thing we we believe at rare more than anything is that we should have storytelling in everything that we do like games are it's more than just the mechanics and the way we plan out our years now in sea of thieves is i'll get together with a bunch of the designers like chris and we'll plan out what, what where are we taking the story and where are we taking the world in sea of thieves and stories not just Story not in the traditional sense, like cutscenes, it's the context that Chris refers to. There being a deeper meaning behind the great mechanics and the great tools that we add to the game. Um, so now we're able to, through through adventures, is through all of our seasonal mechanics and through these adventures that we'll be running once a month, we're basically weaving a singular kind of narrative main storyline through it all. Um, and like you say, it is, it is about being part of Sea of Thieves history as it unfolds, but it's on top of what we were already doing with Seasons, but it will strengthen Seasons as well in terms of how it explains why these things have changed. With the with Adventure 2, for example, with the Sea Forts, a mechanic that we wanted to bring to our game to kind of give that fort experience, but it's explained through means of the story, where they've come from, what the motive behind it all, and how you can engage with it as part of the adventure is unique to that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a really good example of how it sits alongside our seasonal content. And that's a good point. Like, so when we think about what is, like at a top level, what is the difference between when we say a season and an adventure? Yeah, so se season, seasons are our three monthly periods where we will add new mechanics, new systems, we'll refresh our seasonal progression, and obviously the new rewards to go for there. So that's uh, there. That's our kind of new content that gets released at the start of a season. And then parallel to that, alongside that every month, we've got these adventures. And adventures, we see them as like three make up a narrative arc. So what players have experienced so far is building towards the end of that narrative arc where we'll pay off all these beats, hopefully in spectacular fashion, we're building to that now. Um, but that runs parallel to the season. So not only have you got the reason to come back to play all these new systems and play these new mechanics that we had with the season, but then you've got this monthly release of the next you know, episode of the narrative where you get to embark on one of these adventures. Sweet. So, Chris, we've seen Adventure 1 and 2 now by this point. Um, where do we see all these, like, story-wise fitting together that, and how does it all bring us to these critical points in the story? Like, how can you speak to that? So, as hopefully everyone would have seen from Adventure 2 by now, we haven't tied up all of our loose ends yet. So, everyone's found out what's happened to the Golden Sands traders, but... Golden Sands is still enshrouded in that fog. It's still in great danger. And ultimately, that is something that we're leading to, is the future of Golden Sands. And this is one of those certainly exciting moments for us as designers as well, where rather than us saying, well, we want the story to go this way, so of course we want Golden Sands to be saved, because... That makes it easier for us in the long term. We don't have to worry about, oh no, we're one outpost short or anything like that. Um, we're actually leaving that in the hands of the community. We want ultimately the community to fight for the future of Golden Sands. And for us, that's exciting. It's terrifying. Um, because we might be in a world where Golden Sands is no longer an outpost. What does that mean for Sea of Thebes? There's obviously this... This kind of curiosity there in terms of, oh, can yeah. can we cope without without one of the nicest, prettiest, uh, most charming outposts in the game? 
are the community gonna gonna be driven by that curiosity by by that whole the joke of some people want to see the world burn like <laughs> is the community gonna do that to our design team like how, <laughs> we, we've got to we've got to cope with this outcome but so so ultimately we're kind of leading towards that moment it's almost like we did it on purpose with golden sands not only is it a beautiful location but it does have a a key impact on their story with obviously wonder in the past and the nature of golden sands but it's going to be fascinating to see that play out and i guess the other thing to to mention as well is talking about how the mechanics in the season com- complement the narrative now through this adventure structure the pirate legend experience that we're adding during season six factors like at a very specific point in this narrative so the unfolding adventure narrative is key to what happens in the pirate legend voyage with the pirate lord entrusting you with a specific part of the story um and the fact that we are you know we believe in it we're so passionate about it about the power of how these these adventures can amplify each other that's the reason why we took the decision to move what's going to be a really exciting piece of content that you know this new pirate legend replayable voyage experience we're moving that to later in the season because it's going to be the I guess it's like the sequel to what's going to happen in the third adventure. Pirate Legends will get to continue that story, um, interested by the Pirate Lord. So it didn't feel right bringing it early because they all kind of strengthen each other now. Um, It's not, that's not how we'll typically do it. Um, But for this, with it move to adventures and us really going all in with the narrative, it made sense here. But normally we will try and do it where all the seasonal content, the new mechanics and new systems will come at the start of the season and then we'd have the adventures throughout. But in this case... We've got a story that we believe in, and it'll be really cool for players to experience. So that's why it's coming later. Yeah, and I, I can't wait honestly to see how this just all unfolds, right? And how it all fits together, and like you say, the decision point. Because we were debating it on a call the other day, right? As to like, where it's gonna, where yeah, it's we were go. split fifty-fifty between which way we think it's going to go, right? And um, I just I, I love that we don't know, and that we're gonna we, we then like you say have to react, right? And we have to kind of go, okay, we're now down this path, and then we'll be heading towards different decision points in the future and stuff. And like, it's just super cool, right? And um, it will, yeah, it will drive really interesting conversations in our community. And I'm, yeah, just excited. Just want to fast forward. I always want to fast forward when we've got, whenever we've got a plan. Yeah. I just want to be like, I just want to be there now and see what's <laughs> happened. Like, so, yeah. It's like the Goosebumps choose your own adventure type things. Well, see, <laughs> sea of Thieves is a choose your own adventure game. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah, it's just, we're, just, we're just living up to the, you know, the core vision of the game but and, and trying to, to bring that. I can say this, right, because it's our design, bold spirit, um, <laughs> to, the, to our live service in the same that we do our game mechanics. Like, how can we bring something new for our players that makes the most of our world? And we think maybe it not, might not be the final form. We'll iterate and we'll learn as we go. But it just, every time we talk about it, even before we started actually working on the adventures, it just felt so right for Sea of Thieves. It's just... It just feels like the right way to give our players not only tangible new things to do, but to get them more emotionally invested with their characters. And, and for some players, that will that will take time to build up as they get to go on adventures with these various characters and in these new places in the world. Um, but yeah, it really feels like an approach that's right for our game. Yeah, it's, it's amazingly like, seeing just already seeing that with Bell, like mm-hmm. playing out from the very first moment, and when knowing and having seen some of the amazing stuff that's coming with other adventures and the cinematic trailers the trailers are so good which yeah, are yeah. so good yeah I haven't seen a few of those now it's, 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 it's pretty cool yeah. like, and I think people are going to get super attached to some of those characters yeah like, they will I mean, we, we saw that with the, the, the kind of older style kind of content update trailers that we used to do like how well those used to go down and like you say looking back lots of our community really think of them quite fondly so when we were when we were exploring how do we how do we amplify and how do we celebrate and get people talking about the adventures before they're coming like having that monthly drop of a new trailer that gets you excited and piques your interest just felt like the, the perfect way to do it yeah, no that's awesome and i know like christine i think you've got some questions around adventures before we jump on to yeah so first one was you know a lot of people have asked will golden sands ever be the same again the answer is we don't know i think we've just we've covered that <laughs> genuinely um, don't know. we yeah. don't and that is i think no matter amazing. what it won't be the same, same again same. it's it's gone through some tough times and will it ever forget those tough times will it ever be back to its old self so. <laughs> 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 
very true. <laughs> Ouch. It is too soon. Yeah. And then uh, one of the other things we've seen is sort of discussions about, obviously, when we've introduced what we call traditional voyages, there's always been like a loop payoff at the end, whereas adventures mm. are slightly different. So I think it's just a lot of people who'd love to know kind of the thought behind the reward strategy for adventures. It's different to live events, it's different to our voyages. Kind of how did we approach being able to give something to players to take away from an adventure? Yeah, well, I'll, Chris can talk about the memento, I'm sure, but I'll, I'll just give you a bit of the kind of back, background to it because we typically, and we do this with our season content, we have on alongside the seasonal progression, which obviously gets refreshed um, every three months, we use commendations to give people goals to strive toward and almost you fill in them in. Um, and we, you know, we bring in new cosmetic sets around new pieces of content. When we thought about adventures, and where we wanted to place them. This was less around having a huge piece of content that takes many, many hours to play through. It's, it's the sense that each adventure builds on what came before. So smaller, more self-contained, but more frequent is really the model for the adventures. So you have a great experience. It respects your time as a player. You can come in and it's available for two weeks. You can have a great experience, but it's not taking too much of your time. And then you're looking forward to what's coming the month after. So commendations doesn't really fit that approach at all in terms of we don't want players to grind these activities um, because loot opportunities are everywhere in Sea of Thieves and that still applies to our seasonal content. But these adventures, we just we, we want them to just create this wonderful experience that you play through once, but if you want to play through again, of course you can. But it's less about grinding them and that obviously factored into, I guess, where do, how do we think about rewards fitting into that? I guess, rhythm of play. Yeah. So again, I'll, I'll kind of go back to what I said a while back as well, like giving players those stories where they can look back over the past year. And it's about celebrating those moments in time by offering players that unique cosmetic that is very true to that adventure, very tied, um, inherently tied to the adventure, that they'll be able to one day look through their vanity chest or their equipment chest, see that compass that they earned in Adventure 1, Bell's Compass, and remember what they did when they earned that compass, what adventure that compass took them on when they first met Bell in the first place. So it's about just taking an individual item unique to the adventure and letting players kind of celebrate those memories of that adventure further down the line. Um, and so there will never be again to the same point that Mike was making about commendations as well. And, and time limited commendations again we didn't want to do that and so similarly these these rewards they'll never be part of a bigger set you'll never have to feel obliged to kind of play every single adventure to complete a set it's not about that they are single one-off items that should be treated as a keepsake of their time spent playing on the adventure um, that are very personal to that point in time of the story as well so that was our plan with the mementos, hence the name. They're, they're there as keepsakes of that moment in time. Yeah, and that, I think that kind of feeds into something we were discussing just before we started filming in terms of that as a, we didn't want to drive like a FOMO sort of feeling and the commendations and the grinding to hit those things would. But I guess the kind of, I mean, you can talk slightly like a lot more um, eloquently about me about kind of the design ethos behind this kind of episodic nature. And it is just driving the story along, right? And giving more yeah. people reasons to play over a season rather than FOMO than anything else. I think that's something we feel quite passionately about as a team, right? Yeah. Again, really two two key reasons um, why why it's released the way it is. And essentially it's getting everybody to experience the same thing at the same time. There's, a, there's an undeniable power as part of that. You know, so many of our engaged players look back on the hunger in deep, you know, so fondly. You know, this wonderful moment that brought them together in the shared world and they met friends and they had these wonderful social interactions. If that, if Hunger in Deep was available for months on end, you wouldn't have had that ability to pull players together around this is what everybody's talking about in Sea of Thieves at the same time. So that's part of it. But then how do you go even further than what we did in the Hunger in Deep? And it's about coupling it with really impactful visual world changes so again it feels like the state of the world is always evolving so 
we've tried to mitigate against you know the fear of missing out through the mementos approach by you know having a having a small reward that feels like it's of the story it's got that kind of emotional connection to it um but really it's about how we take our storytelling to the next level using changes in the world which this allows us to do so it's all about just the creative potential and how we see this planning out in the future and how how world changing we can make some of these adventures. It's all about what's what's the right form to deliver that. We have massively driven that concurrency. Um, like even so, I think it was February tenth. We shrouded the islands, and then <laughs> I think Adventure One kind of launched on the seventeenth. But even those behaviours that we saw from our players, like there was no real reason to go to Golden Sands. There was there was nothing they could start or initiate there. They just went to poke about, yeah, and we saw yeah. that anecdotally where players sort of like as soon as the floodgates opened on the servers, like they just went there and poked about, met people, went, have you found anything? And having that opportunity for people to kind of congregate, be like, what's going on here? And then you see it again a week later. It's just really nice for, I think, my team, especially being on the front line of it, to see that concurrency and see what people are talking about. And like, oh, they've, they've hit this point now. Oh, they've started to do the adventure. Okay, people are finding rune tablets. Like, this is, it's, it's a really nice experience, especially just, you know, before we launched season six, that's right, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> 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 yeah. Those kind of ghostly apparitions of the forts. Yes. Being seen yeah. on the sea. It's like the, the amount of screenshots. It's just, it's a really nice thing to be able to kind of pull people towards, okay, what can we expect yeah. from next week? I mean, we told them because we did obviously the preview event. <laughs> yeah. And many beautiful illustrative videos from our wonderful video team here. Um, but having people just experience that, if, if they've managed to like miss a trailer, they see something on the horizon like, that's cool. Yeah. Let's go. What's next week? And we, we, that kind of thing. We, we've dabbled with it yeah. all, all the way since launch, whether that's the, the Reaper's hideout being built up over time or the, you know, the Castaway Shack being built up. But, but again, they're the kind of little bonuses that we do just because we're passionate about it. But taking that to the next level as part of like officially how we update the game and what we plan for and how we think about our storytelling, that it's, it's a huge opportunity. And that was a purposeful choice as well to make almost like the first significant world change in this move to adventures be as significant as it was, like taking an outpost that everyone loves and actually leaving it in ruin, just changing the visual makeup of it. And in our game that's that really shines with that sense of exploration, with that sense of discovery, again, us wanting to push to make the world more dynamic, you rekindle that sense. And I think that's what drove everyone to come in because it just feels different to be exploring these locations that you know like the back of your hand. You just expect it to be a certain way and then for it to be so different, to be so spooky, that ambience completely changes. It just rekindles that sense of exploration, that discovery, that curiosity. Where's where's the story going to go next? And that was very much an intentful decision as to why this was the first set of world changes. There's definitely a balance and just something I wanted to spend some time talking about is kind of why why the why three adventures in a narrative arc. And I think it would be fair for some of our players to to think about, well, what does that mean if I miss certain adventures? Do I can I follow along with the story? How do I still feel like I'm invested? So this is a bit of a sea of teas, but we should we should talk about it's it. Going, we are we are we are um sit back, everyone. <laughs> we, we're, talk, we're, we're talking about, you know, making these and we're having such a great time working to create these trailers to, to show this ep, you know, episodic unfolding stories really exciting um as, as as players will have seen in the second adventure trail we had, a, we had a lot of fun with that one um but we actually want to support video playback on our front end so we're doing some work now we don't have any specific time scales when this is going to launch but it's something we're committed to so previous lore trailers you'll be able to follow along with the story on the front end uh, and of course, that will also be available on our website as well. So keeping up with the story is is a key thing for us in keeping players emotionally invested. But then those kind of three episode arcs are also key to that as well, where you feel that kind of build up to the climax and then we kind of go, the story builds on that but goes off in a different direction. We think that's also key of giving players another jumping on point. Um, if they've missed the first arc or the second arc, there's another way they can jump on. Uh, on a regular basis so lots of thinking has gone into the the specific kind of format of it does that mean say we get to hear john mcmurtry doing a previously on cfd 
We totally should. We, shall, we totally <laughs> should. Right a pirate voice. <laughs> yeah, in a pirate voice. But, but what I love about this, and just it just comes to mind, li- listening to everyone talk about all, all of this stuff with adventures, is that obviously this came from us kind of looking about like how players are engaging with Sea of Thieves, what the pattern mm-hmm. of engagement and, and players kind of playing with it, coming back at the start of seasons and maybe kind of tailing off a little bit as they build up towards the next one and stuff. But but the the fact that we get this opportunity to just go right cool so that's the that's the kind of layout of how players engage with Sea of Thieves what's the coolest most exciting yeah. way we could kind of try and change that pattern of engagement improve that pattern of engagement and it's like and do it in the way that we're most excited about but that our players are going to be most excited about and builds on what's already good around Sea of Thieves but takes it even kind of a further and stuff it's just like it's a real privilege but to, to be able to do that for you know for, for one thing but um and to be able to like you know throw all our resources at it to like throw money at making trailers and stuff right because <laughs> it's like th- that costs money um uh, like every month having having a trailer right but um but because we think it's going to excite everyone we think it's going to get everybody buzzing and talking and speculating and and everything and it's just like it's, it's it really is a privilege to be able to kind of do that right it is. and um it is. but i think it speaks to the mindset we have with every every time we go and do a new plan or we do a new thing it's always about that right it's, but that speaks to the spirit i think of this whole studio this whole team um like i, I couldn't it really i does. couldn't agree more yeah for, like, almost 4 years into our live service and we're we're still changing things and still trying to push off in new directions it's yeah well the devil's in the details we'll see we'll see how yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, players will tell us how how impactful they find and how much yeah. it enhances their experience and we'll be listening listening as always but yeah. but yeah i'm very proud of that that it's the you know a new creative direction almost yeah. to our live service to try and make the most enjoyable delightful experience for players yeah and it's about creating conversation creating excitement creating that buzz creating that just that ongoing kind of just yeah excitement i think is the word and you're seeing it already right you really are right with the first adventures yeah. and like yeah. i say with all the teases all the just going to the the island when it first changed and having those kind of all that buzz and the introduction of characters like bell and everything it's just like you can feel it right you really can it's um um it's just it just feels great like the spirit of it and the kind of the buzz it's, and stuff so it's really cool as well that like you say as well it's on top of yes. what's mm. already there yeah yeah it's yeah. not like we're saying like like we're not this doing season, new mechanics anymore. Yeah, right? This season's yeah, yeah. not going to happen at the start. Like we're not doing that whole bunch of mechanics at the start of a season because we're going to concentrate on adventures now. It's like no, you get this on top of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you get a free cutlery. Set. <laughs> well, I was, I was thinking that when when Chris was talking about the mementos and you know, I think some of the best cosmetics in Sea of Thieves are when it's got that storytelling component to it. It feels like that player has done that thing or experienced that moment and that's why they look the way they do that's something we've always wanted to embrace in sea of thieves but even then i know we're doing that a lot in season seven season eight and season nine as we look to the to the rest of the year so yeah this is like i'm so excited for season seven season eight season all of them like the, um, the, there's some all of it i'm excited about everything <laughs> the, 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 but like i think i think our community will be really pleased with the, some of the season plans we've got for the rest of the year and this is on this is alongside the stories that they've seen so far and where the direction these adventures are going. I mean, already in meetings with Chris, we're kind of planning out where the next kind of junction points are in the community. And yeah, it's very much building on top of even more, going even further. Yeah. And, and that's because like, I, I guess we only know so far the story goes right like, like that we know internally and so like we're as excited to hear from you like okay what's the next step and where where what are the next decision points and things i can't wait to hear them so it's uh yeah it's yeah so there's something as well like when we're talking about like the looking back on like when you're in start of 2023 and you're looking back at where we are now and suddenly those decisions and the things that you've done mean more there's that same sort of feeling for me as when you see uh, the folks that are working in the clothing shop or in the weapons shop there outside of their mm-hmm. usual space in, in Adventure 2. And yep. you're just kind of like, there's something unnerving about it, but there's something also just like, that feels like a massive change to me. Because like if you've been playing the game for four years and you're used to something being the way it is, taking them out from behind the tills and placing them, you're like, suddenly you're like, oh, I... I I care more about this now. Like, and I care more about these people, and these these mean something to me. And those then playing as part of that narrative arc as well. You're just like, oh, this is this is super cool. It was like taking Wanda, yeah, and how Wanda just became this massive pillar in the storyline. Yeah, yeah. That's- Sorry, you threw me there when you mentioned Tills. 
There's no tills in pirate times. But, um, <laughs> sorry to be sorry to be pedantic. But it's kind of like, ding ding. Five pound coupon. It's a seed attack for you. Um, sorry. Uh, it, exactly that. Like every time we've going back to tall tales, like another way we've delivered narrative in our world. That was that was a great way to identify certain characters we wanted to give a sense of backstory around. And those characters have inevitably become more well-rounded, more three-dimensional. You understand their motivations. But exactly what you've just said, there's all these characters in the game that are perfect for exploring more and understanding where they're coming from and how they can factor into stories. So we, we that specific example, we'd been building the sea forts for some time as this you know, smaller, more accessible, fort-like experience, bringing in the kind of Spanish colonial architecture, which is oh, so good. You know, it allows us to... Robin's music for that is oh, probably one of my favourite tracks um, we've ever written. I think Robin's done an incredible job of that. But it speaks to broadening the world, bringing in that Spanish influence into the Sea of Thieves world. You get to bring in the different perspectives on the soundtrack. So that was some, something we wanted to do anyway. But when we were planning out the Golden Sand story, it was like... I think we're going to need a cell in these sea forts. Like, let's let's lock up the characters inside, and we'll make that part of the reason for going to the sea forts and having this um, experience as part of the adventure. So you'll see us do a lot more of that, where we've got upcoming content as part of the seasons that can now be elegantly explained, and the law behind it can be explained through the adventures. So that. That applies to the rest of the year. What will happen in season seven? We're already building to that now um, for why players will be doing what they're doing in season seven. That wasn't really a sea of tears at all. That was just talk, <laughs> talking around the point without saying anything because I'm really scared of saying something, you know, <laughs> regretting it. Have you got any more? Any more for any more? No. <laughs> I, I've got a question. Oh, oh, oh. Well, it's not, not oh. It's less a question, more just something that made me chuckle yesterday. Um, but because <laughs> no, I was on the Sea of Thieves wiki and I was looking at like the list of characters for Ooh. for my for my own reasons, my own purposes. Um, but and then I was just reminded that we named everyone at the outposts with yeah. their their names beginning with the same letter as their as their job as their shop. That's right. And it really made me chuckle because I was just like, that's just so stupid, but great <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Which I think is our philosophy in a nutshell. It? It, pretty, pretty much, I'm quite proud of that. Actually. Yeah, it's just yeah. great. And like, so so many people haven't noticed, and then when they do, they're like, like they've been playing it for years, and then they notice. Oh right, yeah. Yeah. where's Travis? Working out with trinket. I do like that though, because if you're playing with someone who doesn't know that, and then they get this, they something washes up, and they're like, take it to so and so. How am I supposed to know which one it is? I'm like, letter. Honestly, it wasn't even that. It was just, yeah. Just felt a bit goofy and rare, so yeah. we went with it. I love it. Yeah, but it's great though, isn't it? Like, it's just so funny. It's just so like, why not? Like, and it just yeah, I just was sitting there chuckling to myself about just a, a really early silly decision. Your like, Sunday Sunday just sounds amazing to me. I built like, some bin covers, bin covers, and then read the wiki. Yeah, exactly. When it got dark, went inside, spent spent some time on the Sea wiki. Yeah. yeah, this is like when I wish we had like animated. Shots like the Family Guy flashbacks. <laughs> like, well, do you just honestly, go like, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, uh, we we wrote a lot of that character dialogue. Um, not too long before launch, we were obviously, as you'd expect, incredibly busy before launch, and it was we pushed to get the functionality so you could speak to the NPCs, and it landed. And we we thought we weren't going to get it, but we got it just in time. Um, so yeah. Spent a lot of spent a lot of time looking at spreadsheets and looking right creating their characters and yeah that was that was a those was, those were placeholder names that became permanent it stuck I thought that's yeah. that's goofy enough for us we'll go with it yeah. so do you want to know why I was on the Sea of Thieves wiki oh this is ex- yeah. this is an exclusive oh, reveal okay. this scoop is, coming here we go no no it's good so obviously I'm 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 all into my DIY home design stuff at the moment building bin covers etc um uh, but so I've got in my kind of back garden there's a big white wall which is like my neighbor's kind of garage or workshop or something so but it's like so it's his building but the wall's on my side um so it's just big white needs painting and stuff so i'm i'm thinking of getting like a sea of thieves like graffiti mural on that wall awesome. see, like custom awesome. designed one awesome. so yeah so i was looking at kind of all the different characters that i might want on it but then i'm trying to think of a landscape shot as well mm. and so yeah so i'm just kind of i'm in the middle of trying to plan that i was looking at graffiti artists and things so because i just want that 
that as a, as a kind of nice memento? I think it needs right. to be a community decision point. Yeah, I might might well be tweeting for, for artists <laughs> to kind of mock it up or something. But um, that's cool. um, oh, that's really cool. But yeah, no. So I kind of like yeah. I just want I'd like it's just this big badly painted white wall at the moment, and so it would be much better if it was like a, a nice landscape shot, but with some characters kind of folding and stuff. So so yeah, that was what I was on the Sea of Thieves wiki for. You see, wasn't that exciting? Nice. Yeah. Okay, so I think we've like kind of tied up adventures, but mysteries aren't in the game yet. No. And it's so can we get an, up, an update on that? Mm -hmm. what's, what's that? Yeah, so the first mystery coming during season six, um, to give you a bit of a bit of some context around what mysteries are. So everything we've talked about so far, so seasons, we look at seasons as the way we bring new mechanics, new systems to the game. Adventures are that episodic unfolding narrative once a month so we started there and then there's two pieces but it felt like something was missing it felt like with that spirit of celebrating our world and making it this place where it feels like the secrets around every corner there's always something to discover there's always something to find it felt like having ongoing mysteries of which We've always kind of had mysteries and there's people there's part of our community theory crafting when things change in the world. But it felt like the Crooks Hollow Ghost and all these rumors that start in the world. It felt like having that as part of their approach to live service, where it would be different to adventures, where it's not predictable, where it's it's released on a set pattern, but there would be these phases within a mystery where the community are firmly in the driving seat of it based on what they discover in the game what they speculate on the conclusions they come to that is what drives the mystery forwards so the uncovering of that mystery is in the hands of the community and the mystery takes place in game so there'll be a series of crescendos and reveals in game but it's also kind of strengthened by activities and mysteries outside of the game so we've again like the adventures we've done some of this before if some of our communities will remember duke's runes and some of the little mysteries we've had play out with the sunken kingdom and the siren queen um but this is really going a step further and having these secret filled quests effective that are just in the world for players to discover but you're responsible for driving it forwards and they're conversation starters so we really want to kind of spark players imaginations which is why there's lots of opportunities to tap into, I guess, really exciting story tropes. So the first one is going to be a murder mystery in The Sea of Thieves. And it will hopefully make sense in terms of how it sits alongside the state of our world and what's going on with all the major characters. But I need to be careful in case I say anything. That's going to take the, take the wind down to our sails. But it is, it's essentially the third like pillar of our live service, seasons, adventures, and then mysteries, which are very dynamic, unfolding based on what the community discover. So that will begin during season six. Can't wait. I know you're involved quite a bit with this as well, Christina. Are you excited for, for what's coming? Yes. I don't want to give anything away either. So no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, then that is harsh. No, it's, um, it's a, an amazing opportunity to work with these guys to bring a story to life with you know, many more different channels and levers mm -hmm. than what we might have in game. Um, lots of fun ways of doing stuff. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's going to be part of the magic of it, which is unlike Seasons Adventure, which are an in-game activity, it's that sense of, you know, going back to storytelling and everything we do, the Sea of Thieves world exists off the screen. Like you can be thinking about Sea of Thieves even when you're not playing. There's different ways to engage with Sea of Thieves in that world, and the you know the fate of their characters. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be fascinating, and that's I'm going to stop talking. I think without again being careful not to give too much away, but it's about again it's the other when we're talking about trying to make Sea of Thieves more dynamic, and we're obviously investing heavily in being able to do that, and. Again, what I said earlier, people know so many of the places like the back of their hands. You kind of lose that sense of discovery, though. That adrenaline buzz when you, you're kind of going to a place and something's new, and this is all part of mysteries and making them dynamic, is that that is always potentially going to happen then when you're sailing across the map. Something could be different. Something could be new. What does it mean? 
and then encouraging that community interaction. We absolutely love seeing the community theory craft. We love seeing what they speculate. Again, speaking to the season six front end, it's been amazing seeing that as well. And mysteries are there to encourage that, to get the community all rallying around, trying to solve the mystery. Um, but it's, it's just fun for us, I think, to see. And terrifying in that we want this mystery to be compelling for a, 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 a lengthy period of time. How quickly are gonna, people going to piece those things together? Because again, think of the Duke's runes. We were trying to be quite clever with some of those. Yeah. And every time we're thinking, oh, is this going to be too hard? Is this going to be too hard? Oh, let's put it out. And then within an hour, we're, we're just there. Yeah. We're there in a chat thread. Oh, someone solved it already. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Let's just not confirm it. Let's just keep quiet. You've got other people just creating noise here. Let's just encourage this bit of noise. But it's always so fun for us. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to see how everyone takes to the mystery. One, one of my favourite things is whenever we release a new build this rock has moved or this tree has moved or some, <laughs> yeah. the, the tiniest thing has changed. And it, um, the community tag people in from rare on Twitter and it starts this conversation around what are rare up to? What are they planning? And I think it's really that feeling, but us going all in on it. That's that. And it's separate to, and I think this is a really powerful thing. It's not just what's in the June release, what's in the July release. It's, the mystery moves forward outside of that b release structure. So you never know when things are going to change. And I think that's key to their power. And eagle-eyed viewers will have already spotted a clue in this podcast. Mm -hmm. Joking, joking. <laughs> <laughs> or am I? <laughs> it's a mystery. It's a mystery. <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> cover your watch, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well I, well, I think we've kind of... Wrapped up Adventures Mysteries, and unless there's anything anyone wanted to touch on there, no? Not really. No I, think, I think just, just the, I guess, the, the sentiment that you were sharing of just this is a completely new approach for us, and we've tried a lot over the years and some great stuff that's really um, delighted our players. And I think this is us going into 2020, 2022. Like, how do we make, I don't remember what year it was then, um, <laughs> like, what does live service look like for a game like Sea of Thieves where it's already so different and unique because of that core gameplay, but how can we make our live service celebrate the best of our world and the best of all this lore and world building that we've created in a way that hopefully will be delightful and fascinating for our fans to play through. So it's on top of, you know, what we talked about season seven, eight, nine that we're really excited about. It's on top of that. So this year is, again, just such an exciting year. Talking about an exciting stuff. We have been pretty quiet on the custom servers uh, front, but we've also been working really hard in, in the background. Um, so, Joe, I don't know if you want to take this, is there anything we want to share? First of all, just a reminder kind of of... The, the purpose of custom servers and and where we want them to kind of to go it's it's about kind of enabling that player creativity right and so enabling amazing events like like race of legends is a great example right of, of something that we've seen in our community but we've seen so many different things like that um and um and so it's about kind of giving control over the server enabling people to really kind of have as much custom control over it as they can so they can create the kind of cool things that that we can't even think of right yeah. like yeah. sea of fashion was another great one right you took part in that didn't you I did. yeah, yeah you did it was amazing uh, yeah it was amazing well like like well like what what an amazing world it was so it was so cool honestly I, I loved watching that um but the last kind of 18 months or so we've been actually kind of working just on this sort of the structural kind of um i guess giving us control over the servers and enabling us to start exposing um, kind of control. And so we're currently doing that in a kind of web page, so like a second screen kind of experience, which is so you'll control the, control the kind of tweaks and things of, of the server via this web page. Um, and we're getting that into a place that we can start testing it just with some, kind of some, some of our kind of core creators. So if we think to begin with, it will probably be actually just around the Sea of Thieves TV. So the, the team that we work with on that, where we're running different events, we can start testing it. And, and the purpose of that is to test one that it kind of, like that it, that it works, there isn't performance kind of um, issues, but also how good is that set of tools to begin with? What kind of feedback do we want? How do we want to start changing it? And then we will start growing that to, to both kind of select kind of partners and also to affiliate alliance um, to really just start opening that up. But it's in that that 
early stage of like testing it, making sure that it's performant, um, and then uh, testing it with our, our initial kind of our own channel, basically. And so you'll start to see some some events there that will be like um, using some of those tools. But then it's going to be yeah, yeah, slowly growing that to to um, to other audiences and continuing to kind of take feedback and iterate on what is available to you to tweak and to change and stuff. So so it's it's definitely not in a Hey everyone, custom service is going to be in game as an option for everybody to do. It's more about like trying to start testing it with our our most engaged kind of audience with a um yeah with this kind of web page tool to begin with, and then we'll look at like what kind of cool stuff is being created, and and then where do we want to take this? Where's the future of this kind of thing? But but really starting with that that core audience. So yeah. and it comes from that place of we know that our community will show off Sea of Thieves better than we ever could. Yeah. Like, well, we bring the tools, they bring the talent. Is that what we're saying? Less, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but it is yeah. that, right? It's like, like again, like the race legacy of fashion, just as it's two incredible. examples. They're, they're, just, they're just brilliant, right? And like, yeah. they're not things that we'd thought of, not things that we'd done. And we know that there's just so much creativity out there that everything, like people already do it and they spend six hours setting something like that yeah. up, right? And so enabling people, giving them much more control over the server so they can set it up in the way they want and, you know, where stuff's positioned, the time of day, like all of this. And um, there'll just be so many more controls that we will look to expose based on the feedback that people give us. And we'll see everything from fashion stuff to competitive stuff to to, to whatever, right? And so it's like, yeah, let's let's expose as much control as we can get those tools kind of as, as functional as, as they can and then we'll just look to continue building out like that and and opening it up to kind of bigger audiences as we go and um uh so yeah the, the future is a little kind of it will be made by that that iterative kind of approach with our with our community and um but yeah can't can't wait to start getting that it's like it's almost almost at that point we're going to start testing it with, with our sea of thieves tv channel and then we'll start exposing it like i say to affiliate alliance members and uh and, and creators and you know go from there it's going to be exciting I, i'm like you say i'm super excited to see what obviously all the folks within the community and stuff are working within what they what they have at the moment which is basically just the game as it is so like um and they're working within those restrictions so it's not even about just taking the time off of like how quickly can you do what you're already doing it's about like when we unlock all that stuff yeah. like how creative can you get exactly you, you're handing the world over to players yeah. and unleashing that creativity which to be fair uh, players are creating incredible experience is just using kind of workarounds and the experience they've got now so it, we can't wait to see yeah. what gets created yeah like what can you turn on what can you turn off and like do you remember the sea of thieves wedding ages ago and mm -hmm. you remember they had to have like guards, guards. to like yeah. to fight off all the skeletons <laughs> yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah, yeah. Which, which, is awesome. a which is very memorable awesome. which is all right. <laughs> <laughs> but it might have been a little easier if they've been able to just turn those off yeah. on that island right and yeah. um and so it's about those kind of controls and things just like give give more control over about the the world but yeah what a great wedding story so do you remember the skeletons that tried to kill us <laughs> the, the kegs yeah yeah brilliant mm -hmm. and even as we roll out <laughs> <laughs> Even as we roll out to like that initial like audience and that kind of first wave when we're talking about like the partners and affiliate alliance, it's going to be really interesting to see them bring their communities like in yeah. to enjoy that mm -hmm. content, yeah. like and be able to. I know, like seeing some of the, the the events that are set up already, they really only can do one in a day because yep. setting that up and getting mm -hmm. through that is. Yeah. is pretty tiresome we're getting them in and going like no no we can get loads of people through here and get a community really involved in that stuff and then you see that stuff getting shared more and like the, the more creative content that comes out across like youtube or twitch or on on our social channels yeah it's going to be super exciting to see that and and where it goes um and yeah that's that's really we're, we're going to hit the end here um of of the podcast yeah. like yeah that's my done. my last okay. paragraph yeah <laughs> And check, and I can pull that up for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's season five, but we've got um, obviously season six has been out. We've got uh, uh, we've just had Forts of the Forgotten, yes, the adventure, adventure two, adventure two. So I hope everyone's enjoying that. And if you have got to this point in the podcast, well I'm done. assuming um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a struggle, but you've got there. Um, <laughs> You probably enjoyed it, right? Because, I mean, you've listened for quite a while now. Um, so why not just... it was just a long car journey. Yeah. <laughs> really bad traffic. <laughs> Radio wasn't button. working. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Someone stole the aerial. Like, yeah. It's like, hey, Siri, stop. <laughs> hey, Siri, stop. Like, it's just not... <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, you probably enjoyed it. So why not go over and subscribe to the to whatever app you're on? Such a the, smooth app, Joe. Yeah. This, is, <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> Like bumbling my way. Have you written yeah. this down? No. <laughs> no. Completely um, admin. But yeah. Um, so you probably enjoyed it. Subscribe. And we'll be we'll be We're back for another one. Yeah. 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 Please subscribe. <laughs> Please subscribe. <laughs> like um so if you if you've enjoyed it, yeah, subscribe to it and we'll be back next time and we'll have loads of cool content on our, our YouTube channel as well. So do do get over there and watch whatever you've missed on there. Ring the little ship's Ring bell. Ring the little ship's bell for all those notifications. <laughs> Don't forget that. It's my favourite bit. But <laughs> <laughs> until then, uh, thank you to everybody thank here you. today thank for, you. for for, for joining back. us. Yeah, well, thank you. I feel welcomed, transformed from the skull into myself. I saw you had an effigy here last week. <laughs> well, you had to be here in some form. Didn't yeah. You? yeah. <laughs> Did you keep getting a, like, unexplained headaches? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my ears were burning. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you just saw and want to stay up to date with all the latest Sea of Thieves news, then hit subscribe and click that little ship's bell for all those notifications. Cheers. <laughs>